Hello, beautiful people. We outside. Yes. Very nice weather right here. Hope you guys are doing okay. It's nice to be here. I am having a great weekend. As you can see, I'm outside. I'm outside. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, in my last video, I said I was going to tell you guys some of the skills you guys have to go and learn to equip yourself and prepare for this Canada journey. Now, it's no longer news that many people in Canada are stranded. I know you must have been seeing it on TV. So now, we have many people who went to Canada thinking Canada was a bed of roses. Now, many of them are sleeping on the streets of Canada for weeks and eventually realized you don't pick money on the ground in Western countries. Everybody work for their money. In this video, I will be telling you 12 skills you have to equip yourself with if you don't want to be stranded because many of these people went there thinking in the first three months i will just fit in from month four i will start working the dollars no it ain't easy bro it's not like that sis so now if you're just coming across my channel for the very first time do where to subscribe and please give this video a fat thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend this video to others. So, the 12 skill, according to research, this research was based on people I speak to on a daily basis, on a regular basis, and the books I have read, and the videos I have watched. So now, these are the tested and trusted skills, some of them, not all, that you will need to equip yourself with before you leave home. One, driving. Yes. I could remember, I have told this story on my Facebook page some time ago of how a professor told me that his first job when he came here to America in the early 2000s was to be a taxi driver. With that job, he was able to fend for his family and pay rent. A professor from Nigeria, yes. So if driving is one of the jobs you see in Nigeria and you feel like, no, I cannot be a driver. <laughs> there are many people here whose family from Africa are depending on and their job is to drive. There are, there are Uber drivers in Canada who make as much as $4,000 a month. And are, they are still going to school. Yes. I am being honest. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. Driving is very, very important. And before you leave for Canada, please... Make sure you have your driver's license so that you can quickly land the driving job. If you are living without if you are living for Canada without your driver's license, it is a big blunder. Two shoe making and shoe mending. Shoe making and mending. In Nigeria, people will say shoemaker. No, no, no. Me not be there. I'm not going to do shoemaker. It's a big job here in America and in, Can and in Canada. Yes, especially if you are good at it. These are not things you have to look down upon. If you have been looking down upon people who are doing shoemaking back in your country. It is high time you say sorry to try to go and learn it because people are paying rent and taking care of their family 
doing this job. Three, laptop and phone repairs. This one is huge. It's huge. I was talking to somebody some days ago, and she said, when a laptop got spoiled, after doing some research, making calls, she realized that just to do a laptop diagnostics, Sorry for that noise. She said, just to do a laptop diagnostics, the cost was $120. Like we all know, the diagnostics is not the repair. That is just the process of determining what is wrong with the laptop. $120. $120. So these jobs are big jobs. If you are equipped with this skill, trust me, you are good to go. That is number three, laptop and phone repairs. Number four, painting. Yes, to paint houses, to paint apartments. Yes. This is a skill I know if you are really dedicated, you can learn this skill in three months. If you have somebody who regularly learned this job and you are able to be following this person to site to see how this thing is done and eventually you are practicing. Six months, you'll be a pro. But all these jobs I have, all these skills I have mentioned and the one I will still be mentioning, you need to have a certification. Without the certification, nobody, nobody will believe you are doing this job because nobody is going to call you first for a test without having to show that you are certified doing this many of you may be asking me just to do painting i have to be certified okay now no voila yes yeah, so painting is number four to paint a room in canada can go for as high as 200 300 dollars People paint apartments for seven, eight hundred dollars. Yes, I'm just telling you. This is money. You don't understand? Painting is lucrative. People are fending for their families here in America and, the, and the Canada being a painter. Don't look down on it. Number five, plumbing. In Nigeria, some of us call it plumber. You know, I told you that this thing is based on research and I have spoken to people about most of these jobs. A lady said this morning that she called a plumber when, she, uh, when her sink and um, tap developed faults. She said this plumber came, did this job in less than two hours and he was paid $260 in less than two hours. In less than no, 90 minutes. It was paid $260. Plumb me just to fix pipe, join pipe. It's a lucrative job. And if you are doing it, be satisfied. Two. Number seven. Air dressing. Braiding. And Barbie. <laughs> Very lucrative. Somebody said this morning in Canada that to cut his hair in a very cheap spot was $25, $30. That is the cheapest. There are places people cut hair in Canada for $100, $70. Imagine you are able to go there as a starter. You can cut people. You can cut people's hair for as low as thirty dollars, twenty-five dollars, or twenty dollars. If you are cutting people's hair for thirty dollars, imagine cutting ten hair every day. That is three hundred. Even if it's just five, that is one hundred and fifty dollars daily. These are skills. I am just even saying, as low as thirty dollars. When you eventually settle in. 
and people know what you are doing. You can be caught here for fifty dollars. You caught ten here in a day. You have five hundred dollar daily. So, number seven is addressing, braiding, and barbing. Number nine. Have IT certifications. You understand? It is very, very important to have these IT certifications. You have to be able to operate computer. You understand? You have to be able to use Microsoft Office. You understand? You have to be able to use Microsoft Word. You have to be able to use Excel. You understand? Have certifications in these things. Even if it's cyber security. Computer programming, IT auditing, you know, computer software engineering. See, learn something. This is very, very important. IT certifications. Nine, photography and videography. Very, very important. I went to MC a wedding for one of my friends here. Do you know that the photographer slash videographer they brought was even the cheapest? Charged them about two thousand something dollars. Yes, for one night. Yes, wedding reception. Two thousand plus dollars for one night as a photographer slash videographer, just to take photo, chicken, 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 then be videoing. This is expensive in Canada and here in America. And I will also have to eat. DJ, DJ, and being an MC, all these are side hustle. Let me add that one to photography and videography. Being a DJ is a big business here in America. So it is in Canada. When people know what you are doing, when it's time for Owambe, ah, when it's time for Gbedu, they will be connecting you. Whether you are an MC, whether you are a DJ, whether you are a videographer or a photographer. Very, very important. Focus. This is lucrative. That's number nine. Number ten. Communication skills. Before you leave for this journey, start learning how they talk here, how they pronounce things. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to communicate in a way that somebody you are communicating with will comprehend the things you are communicating. Because communication has failed. When there is no comprehension, it is very, very important. Because let me give you an example. In Nigeria, we can, we can, I can, we can tell somebody. I can tell somebody, man, bro, you are just getting, you are getting fat, man. You are living well, sis. You are adding more weight. That's good. It means you are living well. That's a compliment in Nigeria. Here in America or Canada, it is offensive. To tell somebody that they are fat. See, somebody cannot be crying. Oh, they say, What? They say, Oh, Courtney, what's happening? They say, Oh, Zoya said I'm fat. She said, I'm fat. They said, I'm fat. See, oh, you both go just cry. Say, You score them fat. So, there are many things we say back home that is acceptable. They are unacceptable, unacceptable here in America and in Canada. Please learn how to communicate effectively. It is very, very important. That's number 10. Communication skills. Number 11. Number 11. Chef. Slash cooking. See, this is a big deal. There are chef and cooks who work daily for some big hotels that earn over five thousand and six thousand dollars in a month respectively yes 
being a chef. Just to cook. Like, like here in America, where I stay, there are many Africans who now have their own restaurants. They have their own restaurants now. And these people came here working for someone. Now they are able to have their own business. So learn how to cook, be a, be a chef, and also try to be satisfied in all these things I have mentioned. Because you can't just leave the shore, the shore of Africa, the shore of Asia, the shores of Nigeria, and say, oh, let me give me a food, let me cook to show you that I can cook. That is not how it's done. You, have, you need to have certifications to prove to these people that you can do this. You need to prove to them that you have been certified by a particular body in your country or anywhere that you can really cook. Last but not the least, this one is funny. Vulcanizer. Someone said in Canada, she had a bad tire because you know, they have summer tires, they have winter tires. Because during winter, the road is usually, is usually slippery. So it's usually it's not the tire they use in summer, they use it during winter. Just to change her tires, she paid over $200. Yes. Just, see, this one is not, this one is not to patch tire. You know, say most, many of them are poor at bar. Akbu for that tire. That one not join. Just to change tire, gate jam. Over two hundred dollars. You know how much. You know. You know what that means. And this is a job that will not take you. It will not take you two hours. It will never take you up to one hour. You have. You have taken your money. It is very, very important. Learn how to change tires. You understand? This is very, very important. And also, I jumped, um, I jumped number six, mechanic. Please, mechanics, mechanics in Canada, some are any up to six, seven, eight thousand dollars in a month. Yes, there are mechanics in Canada who earn over one thousand over $1,500 in a week, respectively, in Canada. Yes, mechanic. Just to be a mechanic. Please, learn this. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend this video to others. Please, we are still in the Canada season because the tourist visa, they fly. Right, left, up, down, and center. So I am doing my best to make sure you guys go there successfully. Don't make the mistakes others have made. Till I see you in my next video, my name is Nusa Comedy.